social security i'll start out with first of all needs we need to stop uh, defunding it like we just did here in, in 2011 and 2012. we took basically the six percent tax 6.2 percent and loaded 4.2 you know again it's going to save me four thousand dollars thank you Obama, or should I say thank the Chinese who are lending the money to the country to give it to us. That's going to stop. We need to fully fund Social Security with what they get right now. Uh, Social Security, let me tell you, every 10 years we add about another year to our life expectancy. In 1935, when Social Security was first invented or designed, the life expectancy was 62. It's now 78. Back then we had 13 people working, one per person receiving. Now it's like three to one and it's supposed to go down to two to one. It's not a, not quite a Ponzi scheme, but it's definitely a unfundable uh, situation right now unless we do something different. I think the main thing is, uh, is to continue to look at uh, raising the retirement age and kind of put the full benefit level. Uh, I know right now they've done that to about 67, but I think eventually it's gonna have to get up to 68, 69, maybe even 70. And we also need to make sure that this both the minimum requirement payment that people get, even though they didn't work under the Social Security Administration, they just have to land here and become a United States citizen. There should be no minimum payment. Payment should be based on, on your work schedule. Um, Medicare is a real tough situation. I, I've read the Ryan plan. It uh, seems like a good plan. It was at least a plan that was accepted by our U.S. Congress. I would have voted for that. And uh, Medicaid is... Uh, I think it's going to really definitely have to get the states to participate in it more. There's a lot of uh, finding out Medicaid fraud out there. Uh, anytime there's something free out there, there's going to always be those unscrupulous people who are going to try to grab more free stuff. And I know uh, sitting uh, on the health board and other legislative bodies, it's all about getting Medicaid funds. And uh, you know why we want Medicaid funds? Like I said, it's OPM, other people's money. It's that federal money. One thing, one of the lines I use often, I said, you know, about becoming your next congressman. You know, I just, I just heard Norm Dix the other night, by the way, and he was bragging about all the stuff he brought home and all that kind of, and he, he was mumbling most of the time. He was, there was a good reason he's retired. He, he's, he's, not, he's not ready to go on as a congressman, thank God for that. And I see Doug Clouds in here. Doug, you'd be a much better congressman. Uh, it, really, it really comes down to we need to, uh, have this concept where we're not trying to get money from the federal government. I see you, you send me to Congress, you're not sending me to Congress to bring home the bacon. That carcass has been picked clean a long time ago. I say you're sending me to Congress to say no to special interests. Thank you. You know, I think it's important that we understand what these programs were intended for originally. When you look at the Medicaid program, it was a health program in which uh, the working poor could pay something into. It has nothing to do with state funds or federal funds. Those are matching funds that come from the feds and the states, and they match those against whatever the payment is, if there is a payment, to provide that health care. You no know, Medicare that came in, in the 60s was to provide health care to the elderly who didn't have it after leaving important employment and retiring. And so we created a system by which folks could participate in that. And Social Security that came in uh, a little before that time period was to help people who have worked their entire lives have something in their savings because so many people who had retired before that who didn't have savings were actually in, in dire straits. And so those programs were well-intentioned when they started. But over the course of time, they've become the piggy bank for a lot of electives to get their fingers in and use it for other things. When we look at the illegal aliens and others who look, treat this program as entitlements, we have right now uh, roughly 300,000 uh, 300, illegal uh, immig immigrants in the state of Washington. You've got roughly three, or rather 18 million nationwide. 25% of California's population comprise that. And we have others who participate in those programs as entitlements. And so we're paying out more from those programs to cover those who have paid nothing into it, so we're bankrupting the system. I think one of the things Congress really has to do is get bold and just say no. That's right. And say enough is enough, because those who are paying in are going to get nothing out of it. By stretching out 
you know, the, the eligibility years for those who pay it in, at the end of the day, you've paid it all and you've got nothing in return to show for it. And I think if you've paid, you've spent your life working for your benefits, it's, then you should be able to draw those when you get to be to the age of eligibility, not have to sacrifice more years because those who paid nothing into that system are now benefiting totally from it. As a congressman, I would fight to, uh, and, and ensure that that's stopped. So, thank you. What federal agencies would you downsize or eliminate and why? <laughs> In three minutes or less. <laughs> Is this my one? <laughs> I think there's two agencies that I would I would target to downsize or eliminate. One has to do with, and this may not be popular, but one has to do with the Department of Education. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an agency that has 4,279 employees, has uh, a uh, salary budget and expenditures of 1.77 billion dollars. There is a huge mismatch between what that department is bringing in or not bringing in, but spending versus what they have in their overhead. That's right. I would rather see those dollars get pushed down to the states, get pushed down to the school districts, and have that money invested wisely using administrators, parents, and teachers to determine the best course of action for that. I think that is a waste of money and resources, what we're doing in that particular department. The other has to do with maybe another unpopular department is the IRS. <laughs> now I know under the Constitution, Congress has the authority to raise taxes. We all get that, and I think people believe in paying their fair share of taxes. But when you have the IRS that really operates in a world of unto itself, without any oversight, without any rules or regulations, and they have the authority to levy, to seize, to take whatever they want, and as American citizens, we have no recourse. I think it's time that we start reeling in that organization and putting some accountability steps into it so that we as Americans can do our part, but government can also do its part. Those are the two that I would focus on. Thanks. Well, my number one would also be the education bureaucracy. Uh, I've been saying that since 1997, uh, before it was even popular when I was on the school board there. Uh, not only is the paying for salaries for more than 4,000 people now, but those 4,000 people probably generate another 40,000 people that have to report to them. Like I told you, our school district spent a lot of administrative overhead to get that money. So there was a lot of money lost in the, in, in the meantime. So I would take the current funding to the Department of Education, and I would directly to the states or probably even to the, directly to the school districts. Into a, just an allotment by, based on FTE. It's a simple formula. You have an FTE, you get the money. And I would phase that out, say, over a 10 year period. So, in other words, we'll wean them off the, uh, the government dole. Uh, it's, it's, it can't be done overnight because the school districts right now are already hurt. But you did it over a time period, you could eventually get the uh, education out of the, the federal government, out of the uh, education business. Energy, energy the, a lot of those energy programs are not doing their purpose. The only part of the energy uh, department you'd save is, of course, the nuclear programs that work with the military and, uh, and uh, uranium supplies. Department of Commerce has a lot of programs out there that have really nothing to do with commerce. Uh, the Small Business Administration is full of crony capitalists in there who are trying to dole out uh, loans to people that are really ought to get their loans through the, uh, the old-fashioned way through the private public sector and farm programs. Lots of farm subsidies that need to go away. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, at the state level, sanctuary cities really are, are unenforceable. And I would hope that, uh, like if the new governor, Rob McKenna, I guess, would become our new governor. If Seattle says it's a sanctuary city, that's what the state patrol is for, to go in there and enforce immigration laws. Um, there is no such thing as an illegal immigrant. Technically, they're illegal aliens. You're either an immigrant or you're not. And that's, and that's one thing we have to get, make sure we change the vocabulary. When they say illegal immigrant, there's no such thing. You're either, and I've talked to Mark Lindquist, who's our Democrat prosecutor, he says, you're dick, you're right. You know, we, we would never use that term, illegal immigrant, because it's, it's, there's no legal justification for using that term. 
Uh, the borders need to be secured, but let me tell you, part of it is this e-verify thing. 50% of the illegal aliens in this country, people here illegally, came here illegally. They came on school visas, tourist visas, whatever how they came in, they came in here, and then they overstayed their visa. Mm -hmm. Where it really becomes a problem is when they get government benefits or take jobs away from people, and we need to prosecute people who do that. Again, uh, the border needs to be secure. Uh, in, no matter how good you have the border, you still have those people that are going to somehow get here illegally and then uh, do things here that they shouldn't be here. And we should make, have good programs to send them back. Thank you. And by the way, uh, uh, Craig Keller and all those guys who, who numbers U USA uh, consider me the, their leading candidate. I'm probably going to get their endorsement. And the thing is, they have an email list like you won't believe. And I was just broadcast on 8,000 email addresses that went on straight for my veracity to bring up the E-Verify. I got the City of Lakewood and the County Council through my, uh, my uh, resolution to stop the state from trying to prohibit E-Verify. That was uh, House Bill 1168, uh, which we defeated. Thank you. So I've already talked about some of the statistics and demographics of illegal aliens, and if you haven't figured out by my tan, I'm a, I'm a little bit a half of uh, one and half of the other. Now, with, and this is kind of a tough one for me because on one side of my family, we welcomed everyone's relatives in this room here because I'm Native American. The other half of me is uh, East Indian because my mother was an immigrant. When she came here in 1945, made the decision to become a citizen of the United States. She followed the immigration rules that we have in place. We have a process. If people want to become a United States citizen, we have a process by which they can follow. And I firmly believe that. When you look at the number of illegal aliens that come across our borders, 68% come from the southern borders, across the borders on there. I believe that those who want to stay in this country and work we have a process through visas and through uh, other means by which they can get employment until they make the decision to either stay or return back to their native lands. I believe that if we are going to have any hope in heaven of getting our arms around this situation where we're spending, like I said previously, over $300 million a year and not getting anything back on return of those social services that we're paying for, then we need to start enforcing um, the uh, removal of illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, whatever you want to call them, from the country. I'm a firm believer that we follow the rules and the processes that we have. It works, and we can do that. So thank you.